Welcome to the Experimental Aircraft Channel. It's been some time since we visited Aero Adventure in Deland, Florida. There's been a few changes. Today we show you their new production facility and go a little bit deeper into how these aircraft are made. Coming up right now. So here we are in 2020. Uh, back in 2019, I did a How It's Made Here at Aero Adventure showcasing how the Aventura is made, how it's built. And there's been several changes uh, since then, so I thought I'd come back and give everybody kind of an update and a little bit more detail behind the scenes of the manufacturing process. So today I'm here with uh, Alex Guterres. Guterres. <laughs> Alex Guterres. He's the production manager here. Um, Alex, how long have you been working with uh, Aero Adventure now? I've been working for Aero Adventure now for six years, going on seven this year. Okay. And you're the production manager here? I'm the production manager here, a little bit of operations, a little bit of everything else as well. Many hats. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Alex is going to give us a quick tour of what he does here and kind of the step-by-step -step process of raw materials uh, and, and the manufacturing. Uh, so normally we order our aluminum shipped directly to our anodizer. That way we pick it up in 12 foot lengths, uh, 18 foot lengths, 21 and 24 I believe. We deal with T6 6061 aluminum, aircraft grade aluminum, uh, as well as 4130 chromoly and those are some of the pieces that are down here on the ground over here as well uh, that are still in a box. Uh, but pretty much when we get everything we bring it in here through the front gate over here and set it up here for a quick streamlined um, production. Okay, and, and what do you use like an average, I guess, dimensions of <clears throat> both round, square, angle? What what types of uh, material is used? Typically a lot of uh, 1x049 round is used throughout the airframe as well as uh, 2 inch square material. Uh, a lot of it's not very thick, 8th uh, inch wall type of stuff as far as, uh, as uh, square tubing goes as well as quarter inch uh, square tubing. Why choose the, the 6061 T6 aluminum and have it anodized and, and all that? Well, the T6061 is, is generally known as aircraft grade aluminum, so we're using the right stuff. It's all uh, ADSB tested and approved, so it passes all those uh, criteria. Um, as well as anodizing provides an additional uh, protection, especially since our airplanes go in, in um, salt, water. salt water, fresh water. It, it can be exposed to a lot of corrosive environments, so the anodizing definitely helps against that or at least to prevent it and so next in the process uh, we'd come over here and take a look at you know I have a list of certain parts that go into kits a kit a build sheet essentially or a packing list if you will um, determine what parts are going to go in any given kit whether it's a UL HP AV2 um, after determining what parts are needed we go ahead and look at some of our schematics which show how certain parts should be made to what specifications where the holes go, where the bends go, and for one example, we have a, a rudder support assembly for the pedals on a ultralight. And that's okay. already been bagged up and tagged up, but that's pretty much okay. how that one goes. So one of the things that we have set up here, we set up our saw, our, our drill press, essentially our production station, and we moved that from the old facility. You guys might have seen a little bit of that over there, so now we have much more space availability. Uh, but essentially we set it up where um, anything we cut, we cut with a, a pretty much a stop system. If you are finding value in this video, hit the like button and it's really important that you subscribe as it helps me get sponsors like Airworks, Aero Adventure, Wingbug, Grip Block Ties, Edge Performance, and new this month, Kit Plane Parts. And right now, Grip Block Ties has a promo for USA customers to get free shipping. Just use the code experimental. Find all of these links in the description below. Let's jump back in. So we have a stop system set up where we have pre-drilled holes where we've determined the size of a certain piece. So something like this, uh, like a collar, um, would be cut from right here. And here's the stop system. Essentially we have a pin hole right here. We've already determined the measurement of the part and that part fits right in the, okay. in the saw. 
Same thing while we're drilling, we can bring some of our parts over after we've cut them, done a little bit of deburring and treating the edges around to make sure that you don't have anything that's gonna cut you. We've also set up a pin and stop system for any tubes we, uh, we drill. We have V-blocks and certain ways to adjust uh, uh, the drilling for 90 degree holes. So if they're gonna be offset on a plane, we have jigs for that as well. But pretty much, you know, we'd be able to drill a lot of parts put them through and put that hole in the same exact spot instead of having to sit there and measure every single part out. And this kit, just going to back up a little bit, is completely um, already drilled out for you. Yeah, for the most part, right. there's a little bit of drilling. The customer's got to do a little bit of riveting and stuff like that. But for the most part, 100% uh, of the stuff is bent and 98%, 99% of it's already pre-drilled for you. Okay, and that process, again, what you showed us here, is using these jigs to uh, predetermine lengths. Correct. So we're either predetermining the length by cutting them. So we set up the stop. We can run a full 12 foot length, 18 foot length right through, and all the parts are going to be guaranteed to come out uh, the same length as well as when we set up the stop system. When we're drilling, we're setting it up so that we're drilling the the hole in the exact same spot on each part, sure. as opposed to or well eliminating any human factor as opposed to sitting there and measuring out every single part and hole and everything else. Right, and this kit is primarily everything that you just showed us material-wise as far as the, the round tubing, some square and some angle, and some flat bar as uh, basically the whole skeleton of this kit. Correct, correct. That's the whole, the whole airframe of that plane is bolt and, bolt and fasten essentially. Uh, you're attaching it to the hole, that's really the outside work you might be doing and cutting a little bit of fiberglass and all. But it's almost like an erector set, you know, a big boy erector set where you're just building it out and, and having fun building it, essentially. You're not welding or doing any other thing that requires some complicated skill or, or anything major, like that. Or major riveting. Yeah, or, you know, you're not doing any major riveting, buck riveting, nothing like that. And, um, well, um, moving on from uh, drilling some of these parts, um, we go to this table that we've set up where we have individual bays for each... Uh, kit that we're setting up. So right now we're able to handle about four kits at one time as we're making all the parts So we're not just making one part as we go We're making plenty of parts and putting them into our kits as we're going so we've gotten a lot busier these last few months So we've had to accommodate a Special area just for production at this point separate from our main facility So from bringing parts over, allocating each of the parts that we're making to separate kits, individual kits, or even parts orders essentially, we've set up this table to help us accommodate that. And looking at one example in specific is this kit right here where we have some sub-assemblies, uh, some tubes here, um, as well as some longer tubes. So this whole table accommodates uh, all the tubes essentially. And last week we had some real tall wing spars sticking out of there. But here you can see there's a sub-assembly here and each one of these would be packed per assembly. So if you have a bulkhead assembly, it'd be in its own box or bag, depending on uh, on the size of it. And so a part like this would be something for like the struts. Well, that goes in with all of that stuff, all of those parts. So this assembly here is for, you said the sponsons? Yeah, so this one right here, we have some tubes uh, that are for 295. So they're labeled with the part number as well as the assembly number. And so this would, this would all be referenced through a build sheet that each customer gets. So they'd get all the parts listed out on each sub assembly. So one through 19 um, and each part number, each would have its description, quantity number, as well as the hardware. It's all allocated per sub assembly. So you don't have one big bag of all the bolts you have each so you have a hard, um, hardware kit, A hardware kit, yeah, bolt yeah. kit for each assembly, each sub-assembly. So obviously after taking inventory and uh, and making sure they have all the parts available to them to start their build, 
Uh, the manual does a very good job in describing uh, a good starting point and, and really the main starting point is at the bulkhead. It's the heart of the whole plane. It's a section that's right behind uh, uh, the seats, the, seats the, the pilot or the passenger. Uh, it's a square box frame made from two by two uh, uh, aluminum tubing. Uh, it's got some bracing, some plates, it's where the gear leg attaches to and the whole mechanism for the retract is located at. And it's a very important part to start off with. It's a bit complex in that you have to rig the gear properly so that it locks in and disengages properly that there's no binding or that it's too loose or there's play or anything like that. Uh, from then I believe the the manual moves on to the front cockpit assembly which is a fairly complex uh, um, section to do because there's a lot of small parts, a joystick assembly, you got to make sure you pay a lot of attention to all the detail that the manual does provide and giving you to assemble that. And from then on, I mean, really, you, you're just building the rest of the, the aft portion of the plane at that point. Um, and again, this is mainly, largely, bolt together. It's mainly bolt together, exactly. A little bit of drilling, a little bit of riveting, no welding or anything like that on the customer's behalf. All right, so here we are at the bender. Uh, after cutting and drilling, uh, some of the parts need bending. Uh, the one that we're bending here is the forward sponson strut, uh, holding up the sponsons outboard on the wing. Um, so here's pretty much a setup where we have a particular radius die with some backing blocks, uh, backstop and a backing block. Uh, if there's any holes drilled, uh, for reference, we zero everything out using a digital angle finder. <clears throat> uh, once we have it all set up and zeroed out, we zero out at the die, make sure we orient this properly, zero that out as well, and then we get to bending. So once we have all the piece, uh, the piece zeroed out, we can go ahead and based on our schematic, we go ahead and we bend and we got a, a dial all around here, uh, a per inch system. So we go ahead and start the bend. So it is a ratcheting system. Yes. So this one does ratchet. You can bend it all the way around certain tubes if they're, you know, if the wall is thin enough. You could do it by hand by basically actuating it this way. But again, like you said, you don't want to sacrifice your back doing this all the time. And here we're getting real close to it, and we're right there at the measurement needed. And then we release. piece and there we go now aluminum or any metal has some type of spring back correct so do you factor that in when in the uh, build or you have a template you use to yes we do use we do have a template we master part essentially we can bring everything up to to show that the bends are the same okay same thing to reference all where the holes are and all that and depending on the weather sometimes if it's real cold real hot you can get different spring backs on it even from batch to batch it can vary from the supplier and you just go back and adjust here accordingly yeah so you go back here and tweak typically you want to under bend you know that way you can go back in and bend it a little more if you over bend and you want to bring it back that's not always a good thing to to be bending stuff back sure the other way
For more information, check out c-plane.com. Remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.